Hi, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Kathy Neptune, and I'll give you tips, tools, and recipes to make your time in the kitchen fun, fast, and fabulous. And I was thinking about our menu tonight, and I thought something fresh and herby to celebrate the spring that is coming. And I thought, what better way um, than to just do a nice Greek lemon dish? And I'm going to do a roasted lemon and garlic chicken and potatoes in the oven and we're going to do a wonderful salad a mixed green salad with cucumbers tomatoes feta with a, a tahini dressing you're gonna love it 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 complements the fresh veggies so well and then a yogurt dessert with a fig topping and a walnut and a little bit of a, a spin on some spices that I think you're going to like. And we did make homemade Greek yogurt, which uh, you're going to want to see. It's, it's fabulous. So I'm going to get started with the chicken. And I'm using chicken thighs with the bone in. And I, I've done most of these. And I'm going to trim them because some of the... Um, some of the thighs, you can see there's a lot of fat, if you can see all this fat that, that's on there that we don't really need. So I'm going to trim that off using a sharp knife and any excess fat that you can get rid of, of course, is a good thing. And then all this extra fat here. And I'm going to do the same with the other chicken thigh and spread it out a little bit on the back end here. A little bit there's usually a point that has a lot of fat I mean you could save these and do do them on a baking sheet and make cracklings if you want but I think we're good and then I'm gonna marinate this um, but we're not we're just gonna toss it in some seasonings and then pop it in the oven and I have my oven preheating at 425 and a good way to get marinate in here if you're not gonna let it set for a while is to make slits in the top like so just two slits and that'll get the flavorings all inside you know you cut right down to the bone is these have the bone in them so i'm putting them right in there and i'm going to do the same to the other one and i would do this even if i marinate chicken legs it's just a good technique to do you could do the top and the bottom of your chicken legs when you're going to grill them or marinate them so i'm putting that in the plastic bag i'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to wash my hands because that's important. Whenever you're working with raw chicken, that's a good, good thing to do. And then in here, I have some, you know, me and my herbs. I love to get bottled or jarred herbs of different flavoring. And I have here some thyme and some uh, oregano and it's going to be very reminiscent of greek seasonings and in here i'm going to show you what i have i have za'atar which is this red one and it's just a blend of different herbs now uh, it has uh, sumac oregano thyme sesame seeds and sea salt so it's just a nice blend to have uh, that's actually this one and then this was a shawarma seasoning which has pretty much of the same except it has a smoked paprika which I thought was good because I had that on hand. And then I had a Greek rub that has just about the same, but I thought, why not use that? So that's this seasoning here. But if you had nothing else but thyme and oregano and a little salt and pepper, you're good to go. But I love all these flavors. So about a teaspoon of each, and it seems like a lot, but we're going to have potatoes in this recipe as well. So you want to put them right in there. And then... To that, I'm going to also add about a quarter cup of olive oil, a good olive oil. Put it right in the bag. And then plenty of garlic. Now, I peeled about five good-sized cloves of garlic. And garlic and chicken, it just goes together so well. So I probably have four to five, you could even do six cloves of garlic if you want. And I'm going to save some of this for my dressing that we're going to make in a little bit. And then about a quarter cup of fresh lemon juice. So I'm going to put that in. How good is this going to be? And I'm going to take this and just 
Now, at this point, if you wanted to do this ahead of time, you certainly could and put it in the refrigerator for a while. For an hour or so, you could even do it overnight if you'd like. And make sure you really scrunch it up good. Scrunch is a culinary term. And, oh, it smells so flavorful. And like I said, if you only had thyme and oregano and garlic and lemon and oil, I mean, that's good to go too, but why not use what you have in your refrigerator? So I'm gonna set that aside for a minute and I'm gonna prep our veggies. So I have here some potatoes that we're gonna put at the bottom of our pan. And I have some, this is for a salad. Let me get a, a cutting board for you. And in here, I've cut and quartered or chunked up some potatoes. And these are just a regular yellow, not yellow Yukon, but just a yellow uh, roasting potato. And if you're going to do these ahead, I suggest you keep them in water so they don't turn brown. And I'm just going to put them, make sure they're kind of the same size so that they cook evenly. So I'm going to put that in here. And again, cut them up in medium-sized chunks. And I have probably four medium potatoes or whatever's going to fit into the bottom of a rectangle baker that I have in the oven heating up because I found if you heat your pan first, and mine is a cast iron pan, it cooks it a little, it gets, gives it a good head start, if you will, which is nice. And I'm going to get my pan out of the oven. It's going to be very hot. Excuse my back. Look at this. This is a big pan. And I've sprayed it. You can see it's smoking. That's a cast iron pan. And I'm going to take our potatoes and drain them. And you can use a colander to do this. And you don't really need to dry your potatoes. If I was oven roasting them, I certainly would. But we're going to put chicken stock at the bottom of the pan next to the potatoes. And you saw how much garlic that I used. And if you didn't have any liquid at the bottom of the pan, your garlic could burn and really impact the flavor of your pan. Hear that sizzle? So make sure and leave your pot holders so you remind yourself that those are hot. Okay. So on top of that, I'm going to take some red onions and I'm going to quarter the red onions. And what I did is I left the root end. I just trimmed the bottom of the onion. I'll show you on this. See this? And that's going to help hold the onion together so you get nice wedges of onion. See right there? And it'll keep your onion together. And that's a great technique if you're ever grilling onions. I love grilled onions. And it's a great thing to do. And you can see how they hold together. Now, whether or not they'll hold together the whole way through is another story, but we'll find out. But I find it's a good start. And look at how beautiful they look in your baking pan. Again, there's the end. I just trimmed it, but it, you can see the root is still intact. And I'm going to quarter these. And you can use any onion that you'd like, any flavor of onion. I'll put that in. And let's put those in already. It's a beautiful dish. It really is. And then our chicken over here. Oh, that's a lot of chicken. And I, I have quite a bit of chicken in here. And what I'm going to do is open up the bag just a little bit. And I'm going to pour some of this flavor. See if I can get some of it out over the chicken. I may have to use the bottom of the bag. You know what? I'm just going to poke a hole in the bottom and squeeze a lot of the juice out over your potatoes. Even though your chicken is seasoned and has some moisture in it, it'll leach down into the 
uh, drip down into the f uh, veggies and so forth. But it's always nice to use all that nice sauce. So I'm going to take our chicken thighs and I'm going to do skin side up. And remember, we've trimmed them and put some uh, seasoning and a lot of garlic. And put them on a single layer on the top. And I like to make sure all the veggies are going to be covered. And that's our chicken thigh. How many do I have? I think I have eight or six. Now I have six, which is going to be perfect. And again, skin side up on all of these. Kind of fold the skin over, make sure it's evenly distributed. And then I like to get all the juice in there because that's flavor. Put that in. And then, don't forget to have your pot holders handy. This is chicken stock, and I mentioned that there's so much garlic in here. You want to keep that preserved on the bottom. So I'm just going to pour, probably being careful not to pour it over the chicken, but just pour it around, and I'd say a cup to a cup and a half, just to protect the garlic and the potatoes, because this is going to cook for about 40 minutes on a 400 degree oven. And we want to make sure that that protects the garlic. And also it'll steam and cook the potatoes with all the lemon and garlic and the herbs. You can see all the herbs on there. So I'm going to pop this in the oven. And when we come back, we're going to do a fabulous tahini dressing for our salad. So we'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. I have my chicken, my garlic and lemon chicken and potatoes roasting in the oven at 425. And remember, I heated that pan, and please remember to use um, some hot pads, some pot holders to take it out. Um, and I'm going to turn the oven down after about 20 minutes. It should basically roast for about 40, 45 minutes until the chicken thighs are done. So you want to test that. And the spices that I use, I don't know if I mentioned, you use about a teaspoon of each of the spices. So uh, you're good to go and be very flexible. Pick out something that your family would love to do. But lemon and garlic and olive oil is a great start for any Greek dish as well. So we're going to make a dressing. I have some mixed greens here that are beautiful and nice and fresh. And we're going to add some other veggies in a minute. But I'm going to start on the dressing. And I made some homemade Greek yogurt. And I have about a tablespoon, a good tablespoon in here. And I am just in love with homemade Greek yogurt. And if you want to know how to make it, it's the easiest thing. You just need warm milk and a cup of, um, probably if you have about two cups of milk, uh, then you need about a quarter cup of yogurt with a culture in it, and a cultured plain yogurt. Very important that it's plain. And you heat the milk up and cool it down about 110 degrees and you add your yogurt to the milk, put it in a thermos and in the, leave it overnight on your counter. And the next morning you have this beautiful yogurt. So check out my video. I did a whole video called Yogurt Yoga. <clears throat> and it'll show you how to make this homemade yogurt. But I use it for salad dressings. I strain it and I make yogurt cheese. I use it for baking instead of sour cream with dips as well. And it's just awesome. And, you know, you might as well have something to say. When people call and say, what are you doing? Say, I'm making yogurt. It sounds pretty good. And you'll love it. And you'll never have to buy it again. You just keep a quarter cup out of the yogurt you make like a starter. And you can make it at any time. And so I, I'm using this to give it this dressing a creamy texture without mayonnaise. And it adds a nice tang. It's going to have a, a bitterness to it. And to this, I'm going to add, this is called tahini. And it's kind of the Middle Eastern uh, peanut butter, if you will. It's toasted sesame seeds. And you can see it's very thick on the bottom. And you want to pour that into your yogurt. And we're going to blend all this up. But I want to get all the ingredients in there. And then some of our freshly pressed garlic. And depending on how you want, I use about a 
teaspoon or maybe two cloves of garlic because this is the dressing after all. You need some garlic in there. And then for flavoring, this is smoked paprika and I just like, like what it brings to the party. Just a scant bit, like not even a quarter teaspoon. Again, for flavor. And then about a teaspoon, this sounds strange, but it's sesame oil. Now the tahini is sesame paste, so it makes sense. And this is toasted sesame oil. About a teaspoon of that, and it helps liquefy the dressing. Uh, a little bit of salt, about half a teaspoon, if that. You can always adjust the flavor. A little bit of honey, because we have a lot of acid going in here. About two teaspoons of fresh lemon juice that we squeezed. <coughs> and a good amount of honey, I'd say a tablespoon to start. Because like I said, there's a lot of acid in this. And then we're going to whisk this up, and you're going to see something happens here where the tahini kind of seizes up and gets a little bit thick. So you want to have some cold water on hand, and you just kind of whisk it like you would a regular salad dressing. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. Probably a little tablespoon or so. And it's a little too thick. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to this. Just enough to make it like more of a dressing. And that's just regular cold water. A little bit more. And then we're going to taste it for flavorings and seasonings. Let's see what, if it needs anything extra. Sometimes it needs a little more lemon juice. Mm, a little more lemon juice. That is really good. You're going to love that. Mm, that garlic in there is really good. And you can taste the tahini. like It's very nutty. Very, very nice. I'm going to set that aside. And we're going to add some more ingredients to our salad. And we're going to take beautiful, look at how beautiful these are, colored tomatoes, all different cherry tomatoes that you can buy in a container. And they're just gorgeous. And I just cut them in half. And you could certainly do the dressing ahead of time if you'd like. No reason why you couldn't and have it ready to go. And then some cucumbers. Now you could get the Persian cucumbers. And uh, I like to peel. This is just a regular cucumber that I've taken the seeds out because the seeds can be very watery. So do yourself a favor and you get all the flavor of the cucumber without all that watery consistency. So I just took the seeds out with a spoon, half them, and then chopped them up. Some beautiful Kalamata Greek olives. So we're kind of layering this salad. This will make a beautiful luncheon, too. And then, can't forget feta cheese. Put that right on top. I love feta cheese. It's so good. And then last, a few little red onions that I've sliced very thinly on the top. And I'm going to serve the dressing alongside so everybody can help themselves. That is a beautiful salad. Look at this. Everything in there with a creamy dressing. You get a little ladle and put that right next to it and you're good to go. So that is done. Make your dressing ahead of time. Cut up your veggies ahead of time. This is a great company meal. And we're going to serve that with some beautiful pita bread. And that, I would just have this for lunch with the salad and the dressing in pita bread. It's yummy. And if you have leftover chicken, which you may not, 
take the chicken and shred it and add that to the salad. That's a whole meal. It's so good and it's such a great combination. You're going to love it. And it's not hard to do. The tahini you keep in your refrigerator and it lasts a long time. And you can use it, um, it's what they make hummus. If you're wondering what that flavor is, it's that flavor and texture that you get from hummus. So if you have tahini and a can of chickpeas, you can make your own hummus. Maybe we'll do that someday. It is so fun to do and it tastes so different from what you buy in the store. Not that the one in the store isn't good, but this is even better. Homemade is always better. So when we come back, we're going to do a dessert that will go pair perfect, perfectly with everything that we've made here. So we'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. Everything's cooking. We've got our salad done. How easy is this to do if you have all the ingredients on hand? We're going to do a dessert. And I'm using my homemade Greek yogurt. And just plain, and you can see the consistency is so rich and thick. And I thought, what a nice finish to a herby and garlicky lemon chicken and then the very pungent hummus dressing on a salad with the onions and veggies. I wanted something a little light and refreshing. So we're going to start out with some yogurt and I'm doing two servings. So probably a good two thirds to three quarter cup yogurt, whatever, whatever you'd like. And to that I'm going to add some vanilla bean paste or you can use regular um, vanilla flavoring, you know, the, make sure it's just real vanilla though. And I'll probably do a half a teaspoon in there. And you can see the vanilla beans in here. It adds so much flavor. So we're going to blend that in. And then some honey. And again, to taste, but I'm going to do about two tablespoons of honey because the yogurt, the Greek yogurt is very tart very tight, much like plain yogurt would be. And you can tell everybody, this is my homemade yogurt. And so we're going to blend that in. What else do we have? This is fun. This is, and again, a nod to my um, spice collection. I bought this, it's called Speculous Spice. And if you don't have this, of course, you can use whatever you have. But it's basically the flavors of Greece. It's a, a heavy, heavy ended on uh, some cinnamon, allspice, nutmeg, and coriander. Surprisingly enough, that's what gives it this Middle East flavor. So if you don't have any of those, you can add them on your own or just cinnamon and allspice, whatever you'd like. But this is great in malt cider or some tea in the wintertime. I put this in my um, tea cakes or uh, gingerbread in the holidays. It just smells like the holidays. So keep that in mind when you're mixing it up, <coughs> to, that that's the flavors that you're going to have at the end. So I'm just blending that all in together. And I'm going to take these cute little dishes because we want to make it look festive and special. I'm going to take this and just spoon it, hopefully, right down the middle. If you wanted to make the yogurt a little thicker, you can put it in a coffee filter overnight in your refrigerator over a bowl. And then you'll have very much the consistency of a cream cheese. So if you want it a little thicker, you could do that and then thin it out with a little bit more yogurt if you want. But you could do this. It's all to taste, whatever your taste is. You could dress this with any kind of fruit in the summertime, just a very elegant. And not a lot of calories because the yogurt is so good for you. And then this is fun. You know what I did here? This is fig jam that I've warmed a little bit in the microwave. And I'm just going to take that and put a good topping right in the middle. Fig and the spices that we used and the yogurt and the honey. It's just so very Greek. And the fig jam is, is very much on the sweet side. And it'll off, offset and balance the taste of the yogurt that you have in there. Even though you have the honey, you need a little bit of help. And this is fun 
what I've done here is I toasted walnuts in a pan with a little bit of walnut oil because I had some, or you can use a regular, um, say vegetable oil. You could even do olive oil, but vegetable oil is very neutral. And I sprinkled a little bit of uh, cinnamon and a little bit of the speculous spice, or you could do ginger or nutmeg and sugar. And I just lightly toasted them in the pan. Keep an eye on them though, because they'll burn very quickly. And I just toasted them on the top, and this gives a little bit of crunch and texture to your homemade vanilla yogurt. And that is our beautiful yogurt, homemade Greek yogurt. And the, the spices and seasonings in there are so complementary to the um, very um, harsh yogurt that could be very strong, but giving it the, the tone with the vanilla and the honey really balances it out. And it's beautiful. You can put some mint leaves on there some fresh berries instead of the walnuts and use just the honey and vanilla. I promise you that is a great finish for a dish that we're making. It is a little spicy and heavy on the garlic and the lemon. You're going to love it and your guests would too. So give that a try. All right, uh, chicken is almost done. I'm going to baste it halfway through. I do that about twice. Take the juices from the bottom of the pan pour them over the top and put it back in the oven for another about 15 minutes and 45 minutes in all. So um, we'll do that and we'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. Look at our beautiful, beautiful lemon Greek dishes that we made tonight. The, I just think this is so elegant. Look at the way the... Um, Red onions, when we kept them intact like that, they just roasted. The potatoes are beautifully done and they're tender and moist and not mushy because that's important. And the seasoning, and you can see the slits where the uh, marinade has nestled down into that chicken and tenderized it and uh, it's just perfection. It is so good. Our beautiful... Greek salad with all the accompaniments of cucumbers, feta, tomatoes, mixed greens, red onions, and our tahini dressing. You have to try this. It's so beautiful. I'm going to take a little fresh lemon thyme from my herb garden that I have during the winter. I bring in just to make it look special. Put that over the top. That's lemon thyme, so appropriate. We're going to serve, go back on our salad, our pita bread, fresh pita bread. And remember I said you can take leftover chicken if there is any, put it in your salad and put it all in a pita bread with the dressing is excellent. Our homemade Greek yogurt with some fig jam and some speculous warm spices and uh, honey to sweeten it is so good. And then I thought this would be fun to do. I did some... I juiced five or six lemons, and this is lemon salt that I made. And before I juiced the lemons, I took and zested the lemons, just the yellow pot only, and I put them on a plate and put them in the oven, the microwave oven, for about 20 minutes on number two, the second lowest setting, and in 20 minutes, it dried out all the lemon zest, and I mixed it with Himalaya sea salt. And that is a beautiful and economical way, instead of throwing out your lemon peels, to have a beautiful finishing salt that is just perfect with this kind of lemon and garlic chicken and potatoes. So I hope you try these recipes. It smells so wonderful. It's such a comfort dish. It's a great spring dish and a company dish, too. And I hope you try it. Thank you to everybody for your comments. And thank you for watching. And may the fork be with you.